Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. So as a part of this video, we are trying to understand how to make the post approval changes into the US market. What is meant by major change, moderate change and minor change. Someone has rightly said that the change is the only constant in our life and same is applicable for the pharmaceuticals as well. The applicant must notify USFDA about each change in each condition established in an approved NDA or ANDA. The holder must assess the effect of this change before distributing a drug product made with a manufacturing change. So, let us understand what are the types of changes, what are the examples and how to notify to an USFD. So there are three types of changes uh, and they are the first one is major change, the second one is moderate change and the third one is minor change. So let us understand the each change with the definition and some of the examples and the first one is the major change. So what is the definition of major change? Any change in drug substance drug product, production process, quality controls, equipment or facilities that has a substantial potential to have an adverse effect on the identity, strength, quality, purity or potency of the drug product. So any change that may have the adverse effect at the substantial potential level, that change is categorized as a major change. So a major change requires the submission of a prior approval supplement that is PAS which must be approved by the FDA before the distribution of the changed drug product. That means the major change needs to get approval from the FDA before you start manufacturing or distributing the product with the proposed change. So what are the example of the major change and here is the number one changes in the qualitative or quantitative formulation of the drug product. Qualitative means if you are changing the only quantity sorry not the qualitative means if you are either adding any excipient or removing any excipient that is called as the qualitative change. Quantitative means you are only changing the quantity of the excipient present into the drug product but in this case you are not going to either add or delete any excipient. That is the two important points. Qualitative change also called as a major change and the quantitative change is also called as a major change. So if you are making this qualitative or quantitative changes you have to take the prior approval before distributing this uh, uh, changed product in the market, especially for the USA. The next example of major change is changes requiring to perform the bioavailability or bioequivalent studies. So in case if you are uh, uh, changing the polymorph, then the bioavailability may get changed. So in that case, you have to perform the bioavailability. In case if you are uh, changing the uh, reference listed drug product, in that case again the bio has to be performed one more time. So these changes will be considered as the major change according to the USFDA. The third one is changes that may affect drug substance or drug product sterility assurance. That means if you are uh, changing some procedures on end sterilization or during the aseptic manufacturing processes, you have to consider those changes as the major change. Changes in the synthesis or manufacture of the drug substance. So the route of synthesis change is also considered as the major change and this has to be get prior approval before you start submitting the product in the market. Changes in drug product container closure system that may affect the impurity profile. So in case if you are having the glass container 
and if you are changing the sdp container to sdp container then your impurity profile your impurity profile may get changed so if you are making the size of the container change uh, that also may impact the the impurity profiling of the drug product so different material different size and shape also falls under the major change where your impurity profile can get impacted let us talk about the the moderate change the second uh, type of the change according to the fda and here is the definition of uh, moderate change so any change in the drug substance drug product production process quality control equipment or facilities that has a moderate potential to have an adverse effect on the identity strength quality purity or potency of the drug product the important word is the moderate potential in the major change this term was the substantial potential now those changes are classified as a major change and we have also discussed some of the examples so there are again uh, two types of moderate changes the first change is called as the cbe 30 or change being effected in 30 days changes that fall into this category require the submission of a supplement that must be made to the FDA at least 30 days before the changed product is distributed. See, we discussed in the major change. In that case, you have to get the prior approval of the proposed change and then you can able to supply the product in the market. With the proposed changes but in case of moderate change let us say if you have a cp30 change the first one that we're discussing right now for that moderate change you have to first submit this uh, supplement to the fda and once the acknowledgement from the fda gets received that yes we received your uh, cb30 application then you have to wait for 30 days and after 30 days if there is no hearing from FDA side, that means you can consider that the FDA has considered your application as approval. And then you can start, uh, you know, uh, marketing this product or start distributing the product with the proposed CBE 30 change. So 30 stands for what? 30 days of the waiting period. And these are the examples of the CBE 30 change. An increase or decrease in production scale during finishing step that involve different equipment. So if the equipment get different for the scale up, then probably that can fall under the moderate change. Replacement of equipment with that of a different design that does not affect the process methodology or process operating parameters. So maybe the design is little different, not as like your scale up batch, a uh, small scale batch, right? But now your manufacturing equipment design itself is different from your earlier equipment design. But you have to demonstrate that this particular change does not affect onto the, uh, the process e e efficiency or the end products characteristics. And then that change can be called as a moderate change and the CB30 will be applicable for this particular change. Relaxation of an acceptance criteria or deletion of a test to comply with an official compendium. That means if you have the similar product now published into an USP monograph and you realize that the USP compendium limit is little relaxed as compared to our in-house limit. In that case, you can relax your acceptance criteria, then that change can be classified as a CBE 30 change. Let us talk about the second type of the moderate change and that is called as the change being effected CBE 0. So what is that change? So changes subject to this type of supplement contain changes for which distribution can occur when FDA receives the supplement. So there are certain changes. Those changes has to be informed to FDA through the supplement. But you need not to wait for 30 days time period. 
Once there is an acknowledgement received from FDA that yes, we received your CBE Churro supplement, you can start distributing your product with the proposed change. So no waiting period is required for CBE Churro change. But as we discussed in CBE 30 change, you have to wait for the 30 days once you receive the acknowledgement from the US FDA. What are the examples? Addition to a specification or changes in the methods to provide increased assurance. So any addition to a specification is called as a CBE zero change or if you are changing the testing procedure which is increasing the assurance of your result that change is classified as a CBE zero change. A change in the size and or shape of a container for a non sterile drug product except for solid oral dosage form without a change in the label amount of drug product or from one container closure system to another. So that change is also considered as a CBE zero change. Change in the labeling to accomplish any of the following. So what is the labeling change uh, that falls under CBE zero? Here are the example. To add, a, to add or strengthen a contraindication, warning, precaution or adverse reaction. So if you are adding this information into your label to strengthen the, this particular properties, then that change is called as a CBE zero change. The second example of labeling changes to add or strengthen a statement about drug abuse, dependence, psychological effect or overdose. The third one is to add or strengthen an instruction about dosage and administration that is intended to increase the safety use or the safe use of the drug product. And the last but not the least, to delete false, misleading or unsupported indications for use or claims for effectiveness. So these are the changes related to the labeling falls under the CBE zero. Let us now talk about the, the last type of change and that is the minor change. So what is the definition of the minor change and here is the definition on to the screen. So any changes in the drug substance, the drug product, production process, quality controls, equipment, facilities that have a minimal potential to have an adverse effect on the identity, strength, quality, purity, potency of the drug product. Minimal potential related to the minor change. See, we talked about major change where the substantial potential uh, uh, take, take place. The second one we talk about the moderate change where you say that the moderate potential can take place. And the third and last one where we said that the minor change where the minimal potential can take place. And this is the last kind of the change that USFDA has proposed. Now the minor changes must be submitted in the next annual report. report. That means if there is a minor, minor change you are making into your manufacturing processes or testing procedures, you need not to get the prior approval or the acknowledgement from the FDA. You have to just uh, summarize those minor changes and those minor changes has to be informed to the FDA during your next annual report filing. That's it. So what are the examples of the minor change? Any change made to comply with the change to an official compendium. If there is any difference between your specification and the compendium, you can make some changes to make the complying uh, specification. The deletion or reduction of an ingredient intended to affect only the color of the drug product. Only color. So the excipients which are part of your color composition can be changed and that falls under the minor change. Replacement of equipment with that of the same design and operating principles. So you are making the change in the equipment. Maybe the brand name is different but the same design and the same operating principles. Means what? The new vendor also has the equivalent equipment required and that change is falls under the minor change. A change in the size or shape of a container containing the same number of dosage units. So you are not changing the number of dosage units inside the container but you are just changing the size or shape of the container. So that falls under the minor change but also understand and remember whatever change that you are going to bring in has to 
assess for the risk so risk assessment has to be first conducted and you may have to conduct generate some stability data to prove that whatever change is whether moderate major minor is not adversely impacting onto the product quality an extension of an expiration dating period based upon full shelf life data so you have conducted the shelf life until your proposed as per your proposed protocol maybe two years or three years now you can extend your shelf life to the studied shelf life data of two years or the three years you might have launched the product with the shorter uh, expiry date as there was no sufficient data available but now once the sufficient stability data for long-term condition gets available you can certainly extend the stability shelf life for the product addition or revision of an alternative standard testing procedure that provides same or increased assurance so you want to let us say change the standard testing procedure with the intention of what the new testing procedure is more effective in terms of giving the accurate and precise data so that change is considered as a minor change or if you want to add some alternative testing procedure for let us say you are conducting assay by uh, HPLC and if you want to add the alternative testing procedure which is uh, same or which is better than your existing one that change is also called as the minor change if you want to delete any alternative analytical procedures existing into your standard testing procedure that change is also classified as the minor change the addition by embossing debossing or engraving to oral solid dosage form other than the modified release dosage form also called as the minor change thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you must have understand the change control procedure for the post approval product for the usfda so please keep watching and keep learning